Well, you were drinking all night. Fucking drinking again. Eight goddamn fucking whiskey sours. <sighs> fucking bullshit. During the boom boom bar scene in Super Mario Bros., they had instructed actress Fiona Shaw to sip from a shot glass containing a worm. Assuming the worm was fake, she'd done as directed only to find it wiggling from her lips. Shaw had maintained her professional composure until the take was done. In Drunken Master 2, Jackie Chan's character falls into a fire pit. Wanting the scene to be realistic, Jackie Chan actually fell into a real fire pit. He even did the scene twice because he felt the rhythm wasn't right the first time. In the movie La Haine, there is a scene where Vince talks to himself in the mirror. In this scene's filming, however, no mirror is involved. The actor is in another room with a body double standing across him mimicking his movements. The train scene in Inception was one of those scenes that seemed so over the top that one could easily think it must have been really great CGI. It was actually a practical shot done in downtown LA. Get down. Did you know that for Terminator 2, Judgment Day, to prepare for his role as T-1000, Robert Patrick trained to fire a gun without blinking, to portray a real robot that doesn't flinch. During the dodgeball scene of Billy Madison, Adam Sandler actually hit the kids as hard as he could, believing that hurting kids is funny, which is true, though the director cut the scene just before they started crying, resulting in some upset parents. And I think I told the guys to roll anyways, and I nailed a bunch of kids. And, uh, <laughs> kids uh, grew up, and guess who they are today? Uh, uh, I don't know. <laughs> in With Nail and I, there is a scene where Richard Grant, in desperate need of some alcohol, swallows a can of lighter fluid in one gulp. He was told by the director that the can would contain water, but it was filled with vinegar instead to provoke a trustworthy reaction from the actor. In Poltergeist, after shooting the pool scene, Jobeth Williams later found out she was swimming around with real skeletons. It was cheaper to buy them from a medical supply store than to make them. Imagine dying and having your dead body be used for a movie. Did you know that in the movie The Day After from 1983, the nuclear attack scene includes footage from real nuclear test detonations? U.S. President Ronald Reagan watched the film, and it softened his personal feelings about being a Cold War warrior and the actual consequences of nuclear war between the two superpowers. Did you know the hotel fight scene in the 2010 movie Inception does not use CGI? The scene, which involves anti-gravity, was filmed using practical effects, wire work, and a rotating set. Actors were suspended by wires, and the set could be rotated to create the illusion of shifting gravity. The scene took three weeks to complete and involved 500 crew members. Apparently, Nolan hates CGI and opts out of using practical as much as possible. Another example of this is the cornfield scene from Interstellar, where he planted 500 acres of corn and ended up making a huge profit by selling the corn later. In Hereditary, actor Alex Wolf wanted to break his own nose when he slammed his head on the desk. Director Ari Aster politely told him he didn't have to do that and that they'd give him a cushioned desk. When they shot the scene, only the top half was made out of foam and Wolf dislocated his jaw on it. In The Abyss, James Cameron kept the cameras rolling after Ed Harris had run out of oxygen, capturing the actor's real panic. When he got out of the tank, Harris went up to Cameron and punched him. In Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, the scene where Scott throws a parcel over his shoulder into a bin is real. In a film with so much CGI and SFX, director Edgar Wright wanted the throw to be real for the authenticity. It took him a total of 33 takes. In La La Land, a single camera recorded the scene with Emma Stone dancing and Ryan Gosling playing the piano. That's director Damien Chazelle tapping the camera operator on the back, and the movie won the 2016 Academy Award for Best Director and Best Cinematography, among others. 
The iconic food tray scene in the first Spider-Man movie wasn't CGI. Tobey Maguire shot it for around 16 hours, making an impressive 156 attempts before successfully pulling it off. Wow, great reflexes. In The Wolf of Wall Street, the scene where Jonah Hill eats a goldfish was filmed with a real goldfish with animal handlers on set. He was allowed to keep it in his mouth for three seconds, but obviously not allowed to swallow it due to animal cruelty laws. You can ask Mr. Scorsese or Leo to back me up. I put the goldfish in my mouth the first take and it relieves itself in my mouth. Oh! I swear to you, I swear to you. While filming this scene in Sherlock Jr., Buster Keaton's neck slammed against a steel rail on the ground and caused him to black out. It left him with blinding headaches for weeks afterward. Wasn't until 1935 that he had an x-ray performed and the doctor informed him that he'd broken his neck nine years earlier. In the Racer movie, the scene where the Peloton crashes was a real accident. It happened during the shooting in Ireland. The actor Timo Wagner stayed in the hospital 24 hours before getting back on the scene with real scars. In the film Escape from L.A., Kurt Russell practiced playing basketball between scenes as he wanted to make all of his shots legitimately in the basketball scene later on. He made all of those shots purely on his own talent, even the full court one with one eye covered and without his prescription glasses. In Love, actually, the opening scene was real footage of passengers meeting their loved ones at the airport, shot with hidden cameras. Richard Curtis said that when something special was caught on camera, they would rush up to people and ask for their permission to use it in the movie. One of Leonardo DiCaprio's best scenes from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood comes when he retreats to his trailer after repeatedly forgetting his lines on the set of a film. What the fuck was that? Jesus Christ! Freaking out in his boxed trailer apartment, he berates himself for drinking too much the night before, smashes a window, and erratically paces. Director Quentin Tarantino revealed that the entire scene was improvised by Leonardo DiCaprio and originally wasn't even meant to be in the script. Well, you're drinking all night. Fucking drinking again. Eight goddamn fucking whiskey sours. <sighs> fucking bullshit. In 22 Jump Street, Jonah Hill was attacked by a parrot during the car chase scene. According to the commentary track, Jonah's screaming was him dropping character and legitimately freaking out. Fucking dragon in here! In the movie Elf, Will Ferrell, director John Favreau, and a single cameraman ran through New York on the final day of shooting and interacted with random people on the streets to film the Buddy Discovers New York montage. Considering the New York stereotype, no one probably even questioned it. Sylvester Stallone wanted to make sure the boxing scenes looked real in Rocky IV, so he instructed Dolph Lundgren to actually hit him. A punch to the chest left Stallone in intensive care for eight days. In The Departed, Jack Nicholson surprised everyone by pulling an unscripted gun on Leonardo DiCaprio during a tense scene. DiCaprio's genuine shock reaction was so good, they kept it in the final film. You got something you wanna ask me? In Akira Kurosawa's Throne of Blood, there's a scene where a group of archers actually shoot arrows at Toshiro Mifune. Like, real arrows. Dozens of them. The scene required a great deal of trust and precision from the actors and stunt performers involved. In Boys in the Hood, the actors' reactions to the gunfire are authentic. Ice Cube confirmed that director John Singleton never told any of the actors that real gunfire would be used for this scene. In the movie Fury, they used a real tiger tank in the battle scene, the only functional tiger tank in existence owned by the Tank Museum at Bovington, England. <laughs> 